Madonna can touch him up. And surely can think. But let me tell you one thing. I've been in the ring with with Manny Pacquiao a few times. Uh huh. Manny Pacquiao throws a lot of punches, but he, but with a with a fighter like Mayweather, he's gonna miss a lot of punches. And Mayweather's gonna be picking. Up. You can only throw so much when you're not getting hit. But when you're throwing and you're getting hit, you can only throw so much. And I think a lot of the fighters that Manny Pacquiao beat are the ones that come looking for him. Mayweather's not gonna look for him. If you make if you make Manny, Manny Pacquiao move and think, he gets lost. You don't think he'll run into something like Haddon? Uh, who? Pacquiao? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, he, he might. He stalking Mayweather. And he, he, just, he might. Let me tell you something. Manny Pacquiao is reckless. Manny Pacquiao lunges in every time he throws punches. He's like, crack. And he drops a left when he jabs. So if Mayweather catches him with a straight around the way, he can, he, he can put him down. Uh, because he's very accurate with the right hand. Uh, yes. when, when he fought Robert Guerrero, he never missed the right hand against a softball. And Mayweather is really sneaky with it. I mean, he'll catch him on the way. That's what, that's what I think. Do you I, think I'm wrong to, to believe that Victor Ortiz was fixing to beat Mayweather in that fight? I was I think Victor Ortiz too. was give, giving it to him. He was him. stronger. He, he was, was stronger. Victor, he was bullying him. Victor Ortiz is He didn't have that heart. When he got took, he took two of his best punches, got back up, and then kind of was looking at the referee like, aren't you going to help me? Aren't you going to yeah. help me? You know, when Victor came to me, and, he, uh, and I asked him a lot of questions. I mean, I mean, he, I was very skeptical about his career, and, and I told him, you know what, you're going to come here, you're going to train. This is, I'm not going to baby you. I'm not going to rapper you. I don't baby anybody. He I, looks to be baby. You know, I'm not with me. And he, when he came to me, uh, he tried to do things his way. Well, I'm the boss here. If you like it, fine. If not, you can leave. Okay, that's what well, you need. And that's why he looks so good. I, I made a big, a big trans, uh, trans, trans formation on him in the last fight. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask him about the fight. Because, man, coach, there was so much bullshit going on in that fight going into it. I mean, I was told to, but, to headbutt him. My corner told me to headbutt him on purpose, you know. But, I mean, I don't I don't believe everything every, everybody tells me. I just focus on my thing. You know? yeah. And uh, now that, he's working with, that I'm working with him, I'm going to move him up as much as I can to the best possible fights. But yeah. with me, it's going to be a, a totally different uh, victory. Yeah. Okay. And then Figueroa, man. I love his fighting style, but animal. he just seems that he just wants to lay on you and trade. Like, man, we're just going to work. As much as you try to change him, as much as you try to change him, he says he gets bored. Is that why? Remember, really? when, remember when he fought uh, San Antonio? Uh, when he fought in San Antonio against the Japanese, yeah, I, that I was there, there, man. He could have boxed, it, but he goes, I get bored. Like, he, he's a great boxer, but he gets bored. Really? Yeah. Joe, this is this is Jaime Wall, Access Elite Boxing. Quick question. I know you're down here in Texas. You say that they're treating you well. I know you got a lot of things up in the in the works. Uh, you're working a lot of the MMA, a lot of the boxing. Uh, Timothy Bradley, Ortiz, just to name a few. Uh, what are some of the things that you have in the works here uh, this upcoming summer? Well, I got right now um, Diego Magdaleno. Uh, after his fight, I got. Uh, May 7th, I have Diego De La Hoya fighting in LA. Another another up and coming, good little superstar coming up. And then I'm just focusing on Bradley now. Bradley's uh, is scheduled to fight in June. We don't have an opponent yet. We don't have a name yet. But you know we're in the gym, just ready for whatever comes up. And uh, we're already ahead of the game. Let me ask you something, Joel. For a lot of us up and coming trainers, uh, you know, if you had any words of advice uh, as far as mid work, any. Uh, uh, feet work, anything like that. You any words of advice? Anybody that inspired you, that got you in the game of boxing? Well, there's a lot of people out there, man, that inspired me as I was growing up as a trainer. Um, but let me tell you something. Uh, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to get the best out of yourself and teach the kids. I mean, anybody can hold a pair of mitts. When you grab a pair of mitts, don't just hold the mitts so the kids can hit them or any fighter can hit them. Correct. Always correct the mistakes. It makes it, it makes a difference between somebody holding a mitt and teaching because teaching how to how to hit mitts is not just about hitting anybody can hit them but can you hit it right that's a, that's a, that's the thing. Now, I know we were talking about a lot of the speculation here with the Mayweather and Pacquiao fight. I mean we have some great weekend of boxing. We got Chavez Jr. Uh, we got Ruslan Matisse. We got Crawford. We got Mondelano. Uh, you know it's the sport of boxing is coming up. It's never been away. I mean, for us diehard boxing fans, we've been around it. So, you know, what can you say about these upcoming fights? This is an exciting uh, month of boxing. Well, you know what? That's that's what the people want to see. We want to see the best, the best possible matchups. And I think uh, this uh, this next uh, week's coming up. This is starting this weekend and the following weekend. We have some great boxing. We have great uh, matchup fights. And uh, this is the boxing that the people want to see now. The fans want to see some good boxing. Absolutely. And they're going to have it, especially in the Ruslam and Matisse fight. It's going to be a great fight. I think that Dolorme and, uh, and Charles Crawford are going to be a good fight. You know, these are the fights that people are waiting for. Let me ask you last question. If you had to make your three predictions with the Travis Jr., Ruslan, and the uh, Crawford fight, who do you got? 
predictions uh, on, on the Crawford. I got Crawford. Crawford uh, uh, um, is a great fighter. He's a package put together. I mean, he can box lefty, righty. He keeps a real good composure. He can hit, and he can box. He has great angles, great feet. And uh, on the Ruslam, you know what? If I have to pick, I would have to go with Ruslam. I mean, don't get me wrong. They're both great fighters. I know them both. But the thing is this. They both hit hard. They both hit really hard. And uh, that fight is going to determine who takes who takes the hardest punch. Exactly. And, I, and I've seen Matisse go down a few times. John Molina put him down a few times. And Ruslan's never been down. That's you know, right. They're both going to hit. That's the, that's, that's, the only, that's the only reason why I pick Ruslan. Because they're both going to hit each other. And, 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 and if you really look at it, who takes the hardest punch? Matisse has been down, and Ruslan hasn't. You know? But one thing, Matisse is a great boxer. If he decides to box in a fight, he can win the fight. Exactly. But he's not gonna fight. He's yeah. not gonna box. He's, he's not gonna box. He's gonna go for it's the fight. It's gonna be a slugfest. Yeah. That's it. And what are you in uh, with the Chavez Jr. and uh, the Chavez Jr. Chavez Jr. Got it. Really? Uh, Chavez Jr. No doubt. Yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, this is Jimmy Blue, All Access Elite Boxing with Joel Diaz, one of the best trainers in the world. Thank you.